I was sitting on the toilet the other day making an interesting collection of solids, liquids and gases and thought now might be a good time to A. Crack a window and B. Figure out what is a solid, a liquid or a gas. Put these together and we're talking about the states of matter, a somewhat grand and unhelpful title and a missed opportunity for a great pun next time there's a fraught American election. Welcome to Ohio, a state of matter. Anywho, I digress. Who besides my rear end brought us these things called solids, liquids and gases? Well, the first person to write this down wrote it in a poem. Yep, that was how all the Greeks at the time wrote science. You think physics is hard? Okay, now try and make it rhyme. Empedocles was his name, a posh and utterly insane chap from Greece. He said there are four things stuff can be. Solid, liquid, gas and fire. So, my trip to the little robot's room could have been worse. Though later, 2,000 years later, we figured out that fire doesn't count and so we're down to solid, liquid and gas. Everything can turn into a solid, a liquid or a gas, but you can't set everything on fire. I know, because I've tried. How does it work? Well, it's like children at a pretty good party. They get dropped off and everyone shuffles around looking shy and bored. They have no energy. We inject a bit of energy into the party by throwing in a few balloons and they start running about trying to catch them. Then, a freshly sobered up Colin the Clown shows up, puts on some techno music and starts a cake fight, and they're bouncing off the ceiling like nutcases. Take them home, put on a Songs of Praise omnibus and you'll suck the energy right out of them and they'll go quiet. Once the cake is worn off that is, and you get Colin the Clown to stop licking the windows. The bits that make up stuff all sit together quietly if it's cold, they have no energy, and then only move about when they're given energy, by heating it up. The heat makes things jump about. I'm not talking about melting toddlers here. That would be an ethical grey area. Take an ice cube. Heat it up in your underpants and it will turn it to water as it melts. Leave your wet pants in the sun and the heat will dry them as the water evaporates. Now put your pants back on, apologise to the neighbours and wonder if you can reverse the process. Well, of course you can, but you will need to cool something down. Breathe on a cold window and the water gas in your breath will cool down and form water droplets, a liquid, on the glass. That's condensation. Now draw a smiley face. You can also put some water in the freezer and it will suck the heat out and go solid, which is called, oh, what is it? Oh yes, freezing. Alas, something that's named properly. But why, Empedocles, did you bother? How is everything just one of these three? It's all the same thing, just heated up or cooled down. Why not make a hundred different states of matter, each a bit warmer or cooler than the others? Imagine all the nonsense words you could make everyone learn at school. Well, yes, he said, but if it's a solid, it means it feels hard and you can even cut it up. Liquid flows and you can pour it into a glass and gas is invisible and can be squashed like a balloon. Hmm, okay, that makes sense, but it didn't even rhyme. Empedocles, are you sure you're an ancient Greek scientist? So what did our friend Empiricles do when he figured out this solid liquid gas business and wrote his poem? Maybe tell people about it or do an interesting experiment involving his pants? Nope. He told everyone that he is now a god and that everyone should worship him. He literally told everyone that he is now 100% fully immortal. At the end of this lesson, you should 1. Understand solids, liquids and gases. B. Remember phrases like melting, freezing, evaporation and condensation. And 3. Be an immortal god who must be worshipped by all mankind. He was also a vegetarian, but to be honest, he sounds a lot more like a vegan to me. Being the scientist he was, however, he decided to prove it to everyone by jumping into a volcano, which, credit where credit is due, would be a great experiment to prove you're immortal and indeed a god. Wikipedia strangely has his cause of death as unknown, so maybe he was right all along and he's still around today. So to tie this up, just remember the next time someone near you does a bottom burp and you get a whiff, you are breathing in little particles of someone else's poo that's bouncing around in the air. Now that is some science you will never forget. You are welcome. Welcome. <laughs>